All right, the other part of two-dimensional motion that we need to address, and this is a little bit shorter than projectile motion, but we need to talk about circular motion. That's what happens when an object obviously is moving in a perfect circle, or if it's moving um, around any kind of a curve, this still applies. So I'm gonna do all of this with circles, but please realize that like, even though I have this big circle, we could just be talking about like the very top arc or a side arc or half a circle or something like that. Uh, okay, so with circular motion, uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with the simplest case right now, uh, which is when an object is moving at a constant speed, but moving in a circle. And you have to be really careful with that because uh, the test uh, writers are always trying to check to see if students understand that velocity is a vector quantity, which means even though it's moving in uh, at constant speed and the speed is constant, uh, which means the magnitude of the velocity is constant. Uh, if it's moving in a circle, the direction is changing, and therefore there must be an acceleration taking place. So I have drawn here kind of a motion graph. I, I did my best to draw using a PowerPoint a circle with some different positions equally spaced around it. Uh, and what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to kind of just eyeball a ton of velocity vectors. So we'll say it's going counterclockwise, because going the same direction as, as a clock is for scrubs. Uh, and I'm drawing in here all of the velocity vectors as we go around. Um, and you can see that each one of these velocity vectors uh, has to be in a straight line because velocity at any particular moment only exists as a uh, straight line qu quantity. Uh, you can't have velocity, uh, you can't have a vector that's going in more than one direction. So at each time, the velocity is constant. And if whatever's making it go turn stopped, it would just fly off in that straight line. Uh, so I've got these velocity vectors, uh, and I'm hoping you can uh, observe right now uh, that as we go around this circle, while the length of my vectors aren't changing, as I go, uh, the direction changes for each one. Uh, and so since there is a change in direction, we do have an acceleration. There's my big note that I want to make sure that you uh, you know. But as we're as we're doing this, um, I want to um, to kind of demonstrate what direction the acceleration is in. So one thing that I'm going to have to do is I have to clean this up a little bit. This should actually be two units long, just like my initial vertical velocity was. Uh, so I can't really do much to my horizontals or my diagonals because I can't eyeball a perfect like two unit long thing. Uh, but let's let's talk about the acceleration that takes place. From this vector here, we'll call this one V1, let's do it in blue, uh, from V1 all the way over to what I'm gonna call V2. From V1 to V2, uh, you can see that uh, something has happened to the velocity. Uh, um, it has lost all of its vertical motion and it has gained all of this horizontal motion. So the change in velocity if we were writing it in terms of uh, IJK notation, originally at V1, we have something that is uh, zero I hat, because that's the horizontal, and two J hat. And then over here, we have something that is, uh, oops, negative two I hat, because of the direction I'm going, uh, plus uh, zero J hat. So you can see that it lost two in the, in the I, and it lost two in the J. So if I draw that vector, it has to look like this. Oops, mistake. Get the drawing. Uh, it would be a vector that looks like this, approximately, where it's losing two in the horizontal and gaining two in the, hor uh, uh, sorry, losing two in the vertical, gaining two in the horizontal. Then am I, when I'm going from vector two to vec what we'll call vector three, I need to uh, lose these two that I have horizontally and gain two back in the opposite direction, giving me a vector that looks like that approximately. Then going from V3 to V4, uh, I once again have to lose my vertical velocity, which means I have to lose part of uh, this, and I have to gain the horizontal, which gives me a velocity vector 
uh, pointing in that direction. And finally, from four to one again, I have to lose the horizontal and gain the vertical, giving me a velocity vector that looks like that. Uh, so there should be some things that um, are apparent from looking at this. Uh, one is that the acceleration, if you can tell, is pointing towards the center, or at least roughly towards the center, limited by Mr. Terrell's uh, artistic skills and the limitations of uh, taking individual points instead of like an infinite series of them. Uh, but um, we have a certain term for this kind of acceleration. This is called a centripetal acceleration. A centripetal acceleration is any acceleration that is going towards the center of a turn. Uh, so because these are pointed at the center, or at least close enough for government work, uh, we call this centripetal acceleration. And centripetal acceleration uh, is, um, is useful to us now because we've just done motion diagrams uh, to understand, but it's going to come up really important near the end of our forces unit when we start dealing with gravitation and circular motion. Uh, so I want to introduce it here while we uh, kind of have some context uh, to understand this idea of centripetal motion. And I also want to add another term that I've mentioned uh, here and there, um, but let's get it on uh, an official video, I think, because it hasn't been in a, one of these videos yet. Let's talk about the tangential velocity. Tangential, tangen, oops, tangential velocity is the velocity along the uh, along the edge of a curve that is parallel uh, to the curve. Uh, so all of these arrows are meant to be parallel to the curve at those points, uh, and they're called tangential velocities. So something to note is that tangential will always be parallel to our circle at a point, and centripetal will always be uh, perpendicular at that point. Uh, so we end up with something where we have a velocity going this way, and an acceleration going this way. And I know I've mentioned this. If we have an acceleration and a velocity at a right angle, that will always create a change in direction, but not a change in speed. And so that's where we're getting our uniform motion uh, on this slide from. Uh, and I think that hits everything, um, except uh, just as a quick aside, I'll throw a little sketch in here. Uh, if I was trying to track the, uh, the position of this in the x direction, like an x versus time graph, um, Let's say that we're starting here. I would start with a positive position that would then go down towards zero. Then from there, it would go negative. And then from there, that negative, it would go back uh, to zero. And then from that zero, it would go back to the positive value. If I was to try and draw the velocity graph for that, you can see that it's zero here. It has no velocity initially. But then it starts going very, very negative very negative slope there. Then it goes to zero again. Then it goes to very, very positive. Uh, and then finally it goes to zero again. And that would give us uh, a graph that looks like this for our acceleration or our velocity. And then for the acceleration graph, uh, you can see that uh, at this point right here, I have a very negative uh, slope on my velocity graph that then goes to zero there and then goes very positive here and then goes uh, uh, back to zero on the velocity graph there, and then back down to zero uh, here. I'm sorry, back down to negative there, because you can see that it's getting steep again. Uh, and so there is my acceleration graph. Uh, so um, yeah, that's just something that I want to mention. If I did it in the y direction, I would get a similar um, setup. Uh, so maybe uh, challenge yourself to see if you can create the y uh, velocity, uh, the y position, velocity, and acceleration graphs as well. Um, but uh, the, the thing to point out is if I want to find the tangential velocity from this graph, the best place to look would be to try and get the approximate slope right at that steepest position. And if I used that, I could figure it out. Or if I had the uh, velocity graph, oops, that's not graph. If I was looking at the velocity graph, the tangential velocity would be this max velocity, because that would be um, at a position like right here, where it has its maximum uh, horizontal velocity. Uh, so that's the, uh, the introduction to circular motion and kind of looking at it from the motion diagram and motion graph perspective.